What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. We are here on the final installment of our series that's all about distance. And you might be thinking, we need more, there's only been three episodes. But don't worry, we'll come back to distance eventually. I'm honestly pretty stoked for today's video because we're going to be covering some timing issues and things that I think a lot of people aren't talking about. And if they are, it seems to go pretty under the radar. We also have some pretty major news for the Robbie C channel that you're gonna wanna stick around for later on in the video. But before we dive too much further, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Yes, the beard is gone temporarily, but I live my life by the motto of my grandmother, go big or stay home. And my wife is a children's librarian and they needed a Captain Jack Sparrow. Of course, we answered the call, put our beard on the line and tried to give those kiddos the best time possible. And if you're upset by that, you better calm yourself down, mate. So with that out of the way, let's jump into timing. Now I'm a firm believer in using language as best we can. So when we use a term, I wanna make sure that we're using the same term or at least that we believe it to mean the same thing. When we talk about timing in disc golf form, it means that there is a precise window or moment when our body should be doing certain things in our arms or legs, extending or moving in certain ways in order for us to achieve the maximum results in most better, basically in order to be the best disc golfer you possibly can be. It's one thing to know that your body needs to hit a power pocket or that I need to be reaching that outward extension or whatever it may be, but it's another entirely for all of those pieces to fall into line and happen when they're actually supposed to happen. For example, if you've watched basically any modern form video, you've heard that you're supposed to use the left side or your off side to start the throw and engage your body to push it into the brace of that front leg and that's going to create some lag. Therefore, you're going to have explosive power and bada boom, bada bing, you're going to kapoosh that thing way out into the distance. I need to go get that disc. Now, while all these principles are true, timing is what allows them to have the maximum impact. Nailing my timing is the difference between getting this fully genuine autographed Mac Farrell reactor to the basket with ease. which is a mid-range by the way, versus being able to disc down to a Luna, which is a putter, and be able to get it the same amount of distance. I didn't focus on my timing at all in the first throw and I was able to throw a putter just as far as a mid-range by focusing on my timing and making sure that everything I was doing in my form was actually helping me versus just checking off some random box that the internet told me I should do. Which puts us really in a tricky spot for this video because you're currently on the internet with some random dude in a field telling you what to do. Yeah. I guess we live in that gray area? Now both of these shots turned out pretty decent and were able to net us the birdie that we were looking for on this hole. But I'm not just here to tell you that you should throw better timing or have better timing. I wanna talk about a common mistake that people make regarding timing. And one of the biggest reasons people mess up their timing is because they're starting too soon. We talked about this in last week's video, but we're not trying to reach the disc so far back that it actually throws us off balance. In fact, there are some pretty phenomenal distance throwers who throw it way farther than I could honestly dream of who don't ever find themselves fully extended or reaching back like this. So it would be tough for me to tell you that it's completely necessary to hit a timing point all the way back here. The second moment that people talk about is that you need to reach this 90 degree position right here and we call this the power pocket. If you can hit the power pocket, then congratulations, you're gonna throw far. Yet, if we look at Paul Macbeth who has fantastic form, Paul Macbeth rarely finds himself reaching this power pocket and in fact, he usually has a bit more lag and this elbow is even a little bit extended and it's not at the full 90 degree moment that we're talking about. So with that in mind, it would also be difficult for me to tell you with good conscience that you have to reach this position right here. You can see why being a coach isn't always as cut and dry as people make it out to be. So being completely honest, there's still a lot of intricacies to the disc golf form that we're trying to figure out as coaches so that we can best get you in proper form so that you can start throwing as far as you want to actually throw. But with those nuances aside, I do actually believe there are two points of timing that we've nailed down and I think will actually 
hopefully help you throw farther today. My boy Josh has a video that's all about the stack, which is these hands coming together and stacking up, making sure that when they separate, that is a specific moment of timing that's going to drive every other part of the throw and make it easier for us to focus and nail that specific moment. But where I and so many other people were messing it up is when that stack is supposed to break to actually start the rest of the throw. You see, when I'm making the disc golf throw, I wanna make sure that my stack is built and that my body is forward facing, my hips are forward facing, everything's forward facing until I reach this cross step where my off foot comes behind and then I'm going to fall forward into what my coach, Mike Strauss, calls the point of no return where my weight has shifted over the cross foot and I have no other option with this right foot or my plant foot but to extend it and go out. But where most people, myself included in this, start to do this is not once the cross step has occurred but they actually start doing it going into their cross step as if they're trying to sort of like shimmy their way around the tee box and get all of these pieces moving in different directions as if that's going to coil or create some sort of power that when our body is discombobulated and moving in all sorts of different directions that suddenly we're going to get it right and nail that specific timing. If you try to get there too early, then what's going to happen is you're going to have to use your arm to pull yourself back around, which means that the snap and the hit is going to be harder to find. And I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, it feels pretty weird when you first start practicing this because it almost feels like a moment of, okay, I'm supposed to be doing something at this point, but don't worry. If you feel that, you're probably just in the right timing. Rain is certainly a bummer, so uh, yeah. We're a dynamic designer city now. But I couldn't think of better timing than a video on timing to make a major announcement for here on the Robbie C channel. Last June, I had the opportunity to join Team Innova and become a sponsored player by a major manufacturer, which is pretty nifty. Getting to throw pigs and race and all of that amazing plastic, including the Wombat 3, has been an absolute pleasure. But as you can guess by the tone of all of that, we're gonna be stepping away from Innova and moving into an open bag for the foreseeable future. It's not a knock on Innova or that they did something super sketchy behind the scenes. Truly just trying to open up my opportunities to recommend amazing plastic to you guys and to be able to try stuff and create all sorts of content because I want to make sure that we're finding the best disc possible for you without having to have any influence possible on that decision. It's been a minute since we've been open bagged so there are lots of things that we want to try. Let me know in the comments below what some of your must try options are that I should check out because you guys know what I've been throwing. What should replace the current end of a disc? Do I go full Chris Dickerson and embrace the Challenger OS? Or do I step into a new territory and possibly replace the pig with something like a bobcat? Who am I kidding? The pig isn't going anywhere. I'm super stoked for this opportunity and looking forward to trying all of these amazing discs and making sure that we put the right discs in your hands. Grateful to Innova for the opportunity to be on their team for the past year and I'm looking forward to trying all of the amazing options that are out there. But would you look at the time? This video is getting pretty lengthy. Why don't we go ahead and jump into our last tip on timing? shall we? The second major issue that people run into with timing for their form is acceleration. Going back to what we talked about in last week's episode with reaching back so far, players often try to reach their maximum speed and have their fastest moment be that initial point of moving the disc forward or simply trying to rip the disc from all the way back there. But the problem is that's actually a pretty decent amount of ground that you have to cover while trying to move as fast as possible. When it comes to acceleration and timing, there is a key concept that you need to remember and that is that you can only accelerate once during your throw. I can't have the disc all the way back here try to accelerate and then try to accelerate again to give that explosive release to the front of the shot. This isn't Fast and Furious. Dom Toretto is not here to save us and our family and no we don't have Nas just like locked into our arm. I don't have friends. I got family. Similar to what we talked about in the beginning of the video, where we want to delay the turn or separation of the stack till we've reached that point of no return, we want to ensure that we haven't necessarily accelerated or started moving super fast or in an explosive fashion until our body forms into that supposed power pocket that we still aren't sure whether or not it actually exists. I'm not telling you that during your throw, you need to move at a turtle's pace from the reach back all the way till the arm starts to 
unfold and then explode out to the front of the shot. Not meant to be that dramatic, but if that helps you understand the actual timing of the throw, then sure, go for it. Why not? The reason we focus on this acceleration point is because this is going to give us that explosive point of power and explosiveness is definitely going to help increase our distance and throwing far. Because that is a straight up fact. If you actually only focus on being explosive or coming out and hitting this final moment of boom sauce. No, not boom sauce like the jerky, unless Double G wants to sponsor this and then you're totally welcome to be a part of the Robbie C channel. We'd love to have you. But there are entire methods dedicated to just focusing on that explosive motion at the end. But explosiveness alone is not the key to getting us to throw super far. Getting our timing down and understanding where the explosiveness needs to go in our form is critical to developing not only current distance gains, but reaching past certain plateaus that we're going to inevitably face if we just focus on being explosive in our throw. Now, I'm going to be honest because you guys know I always am. We are just scratching the surface when it comes to timing during the disc golf throw because as I said in the beginning of the video, there are still so many parts of form that we're trying to nail down and understand even as coaches what the actual best and right way to do things are. So I hope this series has been helpful. I hope you guys have found some tips or ideas and things that you can implement into your game to start start seeing those gains because after all we all trying to throw farther myself included so let's go get it i want to say thanks as always for watching and for supporting the robbie c channel i hope you have an amazing rest of the week and that you start throwing super far but for now i'm gonna leave you with the birdie